Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Greetings. Welcome to Swayam Prabha DTH 16 channel. My name is Ariba Shapir and we are discussing English language teaching. Today we will start a new module methods of teaching English language and before we take a deep dive into the conceptual framework of the methodologies and techniques that are being used in teaching language, let us try to recapitulate of what we did in the last section. In the last session, we discussed that how classrooms are absolutely part of the real world. We tried to figure out that how classrooms are connected with cultural context and they are associated with each other. If we bring real life context into the classrooms, we can expect better outcomes. Besides, we also learned that authentic language use is an important component for any classroom material. So, we need to be particular with regard to its use and usage. The other thing is that language learning can be motivated by moving beyond rehearsal for the future and by bringing encounters who do not share the same L1 into the present. After this session, you will be able to understand grammar translation method and the direct method. These are two important and essential components of any language teaching uh, method. And today we will introduce these methods in order to understand that grammar translation method and direct method have been used for over decades and they are still uh, in practice. And we will also develop a general understanding of both the methods to learn language teaching pedagogy and how we can incorporate these two methods into our classroom. So, dear learners, when we talk about methods of language teaching, the first method that comes to our mind is grammar translation method. It is not a new method. It is the old method. In fact, it was known as the classical method also. So, let us figure out what is grammar translation method, how can we incorporate grammar translation method or what are its disadvantages or demerits of using it into the language classroom. So, I will try to narrate a situation where we will come across with a classroom and uh, in the classroom we will find a teacher who will be teaching language through this particular method. And we will also figure out the questions that will be raised by the students, what will be the reply of the teacher and how the language teaching is going to be dealt through this method. So, let us try to understand that how this GT method works and I uh, will try to tell you the situation. Uh, first, we will incorporate uh, some students into the classroom and then we will see that how teacher responds to the questions and how she comes across with teaching. So, first what happens is that as you enter into the classroom, you find that the class is going on and in the classroom, there is a story that is being written by R.K. Narayan and uh, students are reading that story and that story is uh, waiting for the Mahatma. So, I am writing over here waiting for the Mahatma. This is a famous text. Now, in this uh, story, uh, what happens is that students are reading uh, it loudly. So, the first component or a technique that is essential in a, in a grammar translation method is that reading takes place. Each student is called on to read a few lines from the passage and after they finish the reading, they are asked to understand it or they are asked to translate it into Hindi language or the native language. So, the second thing which I am writing over here is translation that takes place in grammar translation method. 
Now, next thing what happens is that the teacher helps them uh, to develop a new vocabulary items and he or she tries to uh, translate those difficult words into the native language. So, this grammar translation method also deals with vocabulary items. Now, what happens is that uh, one girl asks a question and she says, teacher, can you tell us what is the meaning of uh, that non-violence is not conceived as a weapon of the weakest, but the choice of the strongest. Then what happens is that the teacher tries to explain what is weak. She tells or he tells that weak refers to marginalized people. Weak refers to farmers or maybe women and then she interrelates this concept with the other parts of the sentence. So, you can easily identify that the components in a sentence are being treated in isolated uh, way. They are not being uh, used in a context. So, I am writing here is that thing that takes place over here is the teacher resolves the rhetoric devices meaning by explaining it into the classes and uh, isolation, isolated context or isolated sentences are being dealt. Since the students have no more questions, the teacher asks them to write the answers to the comprehension passages. So, comprehension passage is one of the examples of using a grammar translation method. And after one half hour, the teacher asks them to translate it into Hindi language or in Bengali language depending upon the scenario and the native language preference. So, the teacher asks the students to translate it or passage is being given and the students together uh, start, uh, uh, start converting those sentences in an isolated way and they rewrite it in their native language. Now, the teacher, teacher says that uh, students have to turn on the page and uh, there is a list of words there. So, an exercise takes place and in this exercise, students are asked to uh, find out the difficult words, for example, ambition, for example, uh, words like non-violence or uh, determination and teacher asks them to uh, rewrite these words in the native language. So, as you see uh, the whole scenario, you find out that grammar translation as the name itself suggests mainly talks about grammar, mainly talks about translation. And when we say grammar, we mainly refer to the structural part of the sentence. We consider that language has a prescriptive approach and we have to learn the grammar in a certain way in a certain flow and therefore, we will, we will take up the language, uh, we will acquire and learn the language in that way. The other examples the teacher can incorporate in grammar translation is for, uh, let us say, uh, you know, she or he asks to, to uh, take out two verb phrases or two verb words, for example, get up, uh, come in and so on. So, in this way what happens is that teacher mainly focuses on essential components of the language, deals uh, each and every word in an isolated way and also tries to explain this method by telling, uh, by telling the importance of the translation and encourages the, uh, the students to translate it in a better way. So, here is the crux of all the techniques that are being used in grammar translation method. So, we saw and realized that in the example, translation of literary passage takes place, reading comprehension questions occur, uh, students were asked to deal uh, 
with vocabulary items, so antonyms and synonyms can also be used, cognates can also be used, fill in the blanks uh, were the main exercises and also uh, we cannot ignore the fact that grammar translation method focuses on memorization. It focuses on road translation because it refers to structural part of the language. It focuses on the rules. So, it mainly focuses on memorization of rules and then applying those rules by uh, uh, and applying those rules in the sentences that come across. So, after taking up the example of grammar translation method, let us try to find out what are the principles of this method. So, as you see in the slide, a fundamental purpose of learning a foreign language is to be able to read literature in it. So, in the first example, uh, we realized that the reading of the text takes place and on the basis of that comprehension text or on the basis of that literary piece of text, students build questions and the teacher responds to it. An important goal is for students to be able to translate each language into the other. Translation is the main component and it is largely emphasized. The ability to communicate in the target language is not a goal of foreign language instruction. So, when we are asked to uh, deal vocabulary and when we are asked to memorize grammatical rules, we mainly focus on written part of it. Uh, spoken was not really encouraged in this method because teacher used native language uh, as a medium of instruction and this is something which is to be noted here that medium of instruction remains a native language, it is not the target language. A whole scenario occurs in the bilingual mode and therefore we can eventually conclude that this particular uh, uh, method does not focus on verbal communication, but it is largely on structure and also of uh, the vocabulary items. The other thing is that the primary skills is to be developed that are reading and writing and the teacher is the authority in the classroom. So, students were supposed to ask the questions and the teacher is the person who knows all. So, teacher is the main uh, uh, main component or you can say that the teacher plays a central role in the classroom and the teacher has the whole authority of responding it, to it. The other thing is in such scenario we say that the classroom remains teacher centered. There are two types of classrooms that I would like to discuss over here, learner centered and the teacher class uh, and the teacher centered classroom. So, generally what happens in teacher centered classroom, the teacher takes a central position and teacher um, uh, uh, the, 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 the right, the, the, the authority of the teacher is always higher and uh, there is a less participation of students. However, in the learner centered class, there is more participation of students. Students are given equal opportunity to participate in the class. The tasks and the activities are being carried out by the students. However, the teacher also remains uh, at the front, but teacher is more of a supportive and collaborative uh, kind of entity in the classroom. Learning, is, uh, learning the form of the language is important. So, how language is written? how it is being produced, what components does it include. Uh, for example, it includes subject, it includes verb, it includes object, how it is being placed in a sentence that are being emphasized in grammar translation method. Deductive application of an explicit grammar rule is a pedagogical technique. Now, here again we are coming across with two important terms deductive and the opposite of it is inductive. So, in de deductive approach of teaching uh, grammar or any concept is that first we will state the rule and then with the help of the derivation we will go on with the example. However, in inductive approach we first take up the example and on the basis of that example we drive a rule. So, that is a difference between these two terms. And in the grammar translation method, deductive application is largely used.
the other thing is students should be conscious of the grammatical rules of the target language even in the uh, modern day scenario we see there are thousands of books that are available in the market and these books incorporate number of exercises where students are asked or instructed to convert uh, uh, the sentences into active passive and there are drills and practices that takes place so uh, that's the main uh, idea of the grammatical uh, of the of the grammar translation method in the last we see that verb conjugations and grammatical paradigms should be committed to memory because memorization is something which is important and to uh, acquire any rule we need to memorize it and therefore students are expected to uh, memorize the rules of the grammar and that's how they are apply they are supposed to apply those rules in order to translate the passage so now let us try to review the principles that we just studied and the first question that comes to our mind is that what are the goals of teachers when we say that we use grammar translation method what do we expect from grammar translation method is it successful enough is it worth utilizing so let us try to figure out uh, as according to the teachers of grammar translation method a fundamental purpose of learning uh, a foreign language is to be able to read a literature so literature is largely emphasized and reading is being introduced through literature only so to do this students need to learn about about the written formats about the written components that are being used in literature and students in this way learn grammar rules and they also learn vocabulary through through grammar translation method in addition it is believed that uh, students uh, uh, when using foreign language they uh, develop uh, good mental exercise because they are encouraged to translate so we can say that mental exercise is being reviewed as great and it is mainly used in gt method that is grammar translation method the next question that comes here is that what is the role of the teacher in the grammar translation or what is the role of the students so the answer to this question is that the roles are traditional traditional roles are there and the teacher is authority so i'm mentioning in this slide teacher is an authority and students do not do as a teacher says so uh, students are not authority so we can conclude from the these two important points is that the classroom remains teacher centered now the next question is what are some characteristics of the teaching and learning process so uh, characteristics include that translation takes place and uh, uh, they translate a text from target language to native language and in the same way the native language is being translated into target language so the translation takes place in both the ways and they are expected not to uh, have not only to have a fine understanding of the target language its components and its sentence structures but also the fine understanding of the native language that is being practiced into their classroom and also out of their classroom the next question that arises here is that what is the nature of the student and teacher interaction so most of the interaction in the classroom is from the teacher 
So, this again takes us to the point number 4 that teacher remains authority, teacher interacts with these students and teacher is the is the person who tells what is right and what is wrong, corrects the students and, uh, and guides the students in a, in a way. And the other question is that what are the skills that are mainly used in grammar translation method? And the answer to this question is that reading and writing are mainly emphasized. Now, this takes us back to the point number one that through uh, that by reading a literature, we focus on uh, reading part, students develop an understanding of difficult vocabulary, they understand grammatical structures and also they get to know about the culture of that particular scenario or a country or a city through that piece of the text. Now, why we say that writing is mainly emphasized because translation is the main component over here. So, since grammar rules and vocabulary are embedded into the uh, learners uh, activities and therefore, they are expected to produce fine grammatical sentences. Now, the next question is that how is the language viewed okay? and how is culture viewed? So, literary language, I am writing over here since there is a lack of space, but I will try to make an attempt that literature or you can say literary language is considered superior over any other language. So, not a conversational style or maybe not a, a normal dialogue, but if you use literary uh, literary text into your classroom, it will be largely emphasized, it will be considered more appropriate with regards to the usage in the classroom. So, literary text is mainly considered superior over any other text. And uh, what is the role of the student's native language? So, uh, students while reading up the passage, translate it into the native language and they do it vice versa also. So, uh, native language is considered important and it plays an equal role in the language learning and teaching. Uh, in the entire example or in the entire principle, uh, in, the, in, in the principles we studied that the role of the teacher is the main and the meaning of the target language is made clear by translating into the student's native language. So, the language is used in class uh, is mostly the student's native language. And the last question that comes to G that comes under the heading of the GT method is that how assessment takes place, how evaluation uh, is being carried out. And to give this answer that written test in which students are asked to translate from their native language to the target language are often used, the quality is being determined, the vocabulary words are being compared and questions about the target culture or questions that are students to apply grammatical rules are also common. So, how far they are able to successfully apply those rules and convert it into the native language and the native languages to the target language, uh, uh, they are being assessed on that part. So, this takes us back to the point that memorization plays an important role. If a student has not memorized uh, the grammatical structures, uh, he or she may find it difficult or may be challenging to attain uh, the process of language learning. Now, the other method that we are going to study today is the direct method. And it came after the grammar translation method. This method is interesting. This method came up with some kind of reform. And uh, this reform tried to resolve the issues that take place in language teaching and learning. So, let us try to understand what direct method is how it is being incorporated in language learning classroom and how can we use it successfully in our classrooms. So, in order to understand the direct method, let us quickly 
go into classroom and take the example of what is going on in it. In the direct method, I am writing over here. In the direct method, the teacher is calling the class to order as they as, as the students find seats towards the back of the room. Teacher brings a map, a big map. So, we can say that an object is being used in order to explain the processes or phenomena or concepts. And teacher uh, places at the front of the classroom. So, we can say that object is being used in the immediate classroom. The second thing is that the lesson is entitled as looking at a map, looking at a map. So, students have got the idea that a map will be displayed in front of them and by looking up at the map, they will be able to understand what is it about, what components does it include and what is the area that they are going to focus on. So, while looking up at the map, uh, students are being called one by one and they read a sentence from the reading passage. Now, here again reading passage or reading is largely emphasized. So, at the beginning of the session, reading passage takes place. The teacher points out to the part of the map the sentence describes after each has read this sentence. So, for example, if the map of India is being shown to the students and uh, uh, students read out that India is a country which has uh, Indian Ocean uh, uh, in the south and um, Bay of Bengal in the east and Arabian Sea in the west. So, teacher at the same time points out the Arabian Sea, uh, Bay of Bengal and Indian Ocean explaining that these are the seas that are being located over these areas. Now, let us try to understand that what a student reads out that India lies in South Asia. Uh, now, while showing up the map, the teacher explains that this is the South Asia and India is located at the southern part of the Asia. It has 28 states, so teacher tries to draw the boundaries or teacher, you know, puts up the circle and draws lines in order to show that there are 28 states. Uh, one student reads out that the largest state of India is Rajasthan. So, teacher again points out to the Rajasthan and tells the students that this is the biggest state in India. And similarly, other students reveal that India consists of many rivers. So, teacher draws a line by showing that this river goes from northern to the southern area, from eastern to western area and so on. So, in this way, language learning is taking place and there is no translation that is being happening. Once after this, you know, the students finish the passage, uh, they are asked if they have any questions. So, a student asks, ma'am uh, or sir, please tell what is peninsula. So, again, the teacher goes to the southern part, tries to show that India is being covered by three areas of what three, three uh, seas and tries to locate that on the eastern side there is Bay of Bengal, on the southern side there is uh, Indian Ocean and on the western side there is an Arabian Sea and India is also covered by land on the other, on the upper part. So, that is how peninsula is, be, is called as. The student says, oh, okay, I understand it. Now, in this entire scenario, it is pretty clear that students need not to understand in the native language, rather he or she gets it through the object and the teacher's explanation. The entire conversation or you can say dialogue takes place in the target language and not at all in the native language or any other. The question and answer in the same way uh, continues for a few more minutes. And teacher invites the students to ask questions, the hands goes on and after several questions have been posed, one girl asks, uh, teacher please tell us where is Trivandrum. 
So again teacher goes into the southern part of the India, uh, points out that the Trivendam is there and uh, you can say that while uh, saying that Trivendram is there, he or she works out with the student to improve the pronunciation of Trivendra. So, maybe the child is not able to pronounce it or he or she is finding it difficult to pronounce it. So, in order to understand and learn the pronunciation, the teacher works out with the student and uh, the right pronunciation is being developed in such a way. So, I am writing over here that pronunciation is also emphasized in direct method. Now, the next thing is the teacher next instructs the students to turn on to exercises and do fill in the blanks. So, fill in the blanks are also used here. Okay, they read a sentence aloud and supply the missing a word that they are reading. In this way, the direct method goes on. Since it came out after the grammar translation method, it brought reforms. The teacher uh, facilitates the answers by pointing out towards the object, tries to explain it. The queries of students are largely incorporated and the conversation that takes place is completely in the uh, target language. And that, uh, through this way, you understand that uh, it is not just the uh, it is not just the reading and writing that is being that are being emphasized rather spoken communication are also taken up into consideration so let us now quickly go through what are the techniques uh, that can be used in direct method so reading aloud is one of the important techniques that can be used question and answer exercises getting students to self-correct themselves. So, uh, by saying that self-correction needs to be taken, needs to take place, I mean that, uh, uh, that this, that teacher do not interfere when they make mistakes. Rather, students, they themselves realize by knowing that they are committing a, some kind of error and when they repeat it or when they use the same word or same kind of situation, they try to um, come up in a better version. Conversation practice takes place. So, in the entire example, we learned that the teacher and the student conversation is taking place, but this conversation is in the target language. Fill in the blanks exercises like in grammar translation method, in direct method also it takes place. Dictation they also takes place and you know paragraph writing can also be incorporated in uh, uh, direct method and uh, you know whatever the understanding the students have gained they can apply it uh, and they can write a paragraph on the basis of it. So, not a much of memorization takes place, but it is more conversational. It is an object oriented teaching method and it has certainly gained the interest of students. So, let us quickly see the principles of direct method. Reading in the target language should be taught from the beginning of the language instruction. So, reading takes place and uh, students read out each and every sentence. The teacher demonstrates the meaning of it or locate the meaning of that particular sentence by pointing towards the object that is being used in the immediate classroom. The second point as mentioned in the slide says that objects in the immediate classroom environment should be used to help students understand the meaning that is something we have just understood. The other thing is the native language should not be used in the classroom and the teacher should demonstrate not explain or translate. So, translation is is, is uh, you know in a, in a layman's language I would say that translation is forbidden here. And teacher is not explaining it, but uh, is trying to demonstrate the entire phenomena or explaining the meaning of it through with the help of that particular object. Students should learn to think in the target language. Since there is no use of uh, the native language, students are forced or you can say they are encouraged to think that way. And in the example, we understood that how students say, okay, I understand. 
you know uh, when they got to know about a certain uh, terminology they inquired and then after knowing the process or after knowing the conceptual meaning of it they agreed to it and they are encouraged to learn and think in the target language the other thing is that is mentioned in the principles of direct method is that the purpose of language learning is communication in the entire example we saw that communication is the key purpose and with this method we try to solve out the problems of uh, spoken communication we try to solve out uh, that uh, you know communication is not only consigned to reading and writing but it is also extended to spoken and listening self correction facilitates language learning besides grammar should be taught inductively and the syllabus should be taught on situations or topics not usually on linguistic structures okay so now let us try to review the principles of direct method and uh, let us set up some questions and we will go answering those questions accordingly so the first question as you see in the slide i'm writing over here direct method so the first question that comes over here is that what are the goals what do we expect what is the outcome that we uh, expect from this particular method direct method is an interesting one it brings re it has brought reform to the language teaching pedagogy it has given more sp space to both teacher and the uh, learner so as far as this point is concerned that uh, the goals of teachers um, what are the goals of the teachers we would say that teachers who use the direct method intend that students learn to communicate since we studied that spoken communication listening communication are important so communication is the main idea of direct method and in order to do this successfully students should learn to think in the target language in the grammar translation method what happened that students were asked to think in the native language but in the direct method students are largely emphasized or encouraged to use and think in the target language only the other question that comes over here is that what is the role of the teacher in the direct that and what is the role of the students so teacher directs the class activities teacher directs the class class activities and who does this teacher the student role is less passive than in the grammar translation method the teacher and the students are more like a partners okay and they are partners in the language learning and teaching process the next question that arises here is what are some characteristics of the teaching learning uh, process so teachers who use the direct method believe that students need to associate meaning and the target language directly so association of meaning and uh, in order to do this when the teacher introduces the new target language or word or phrases she or he demonstrates so uh, explanation is not something which is encouraged here rather demonstration is largely emphasized so you first demonstrate and then develop an uh, understanding of what the idea is or what the concept is so i'm writing over here is demonstration is something that takes place there is no translation in the direct method and this is pretty clear from the very beginning that direct method stands opposite to what grammar translation method is uh, 
so students speak in the target language they deal with the grammar in the target language they learn the concept they learn the uh, they understand the examples in the target language there is no component as such translation so uh, grammar is taught inductively grammar is included and it believes that grammar is important skill for any language use and therefore the first thing that they demonstrate is the example and through the example they reach out to the uh, to, uh, to the rule the next question that arises over here is that what is the nature of the student to student interaction now the initiation of the interaction goes both ways so teacher teacher and uh, teacher to teacher and uh, you can say to student and student to teacher this is happening in both the ways and although the letter is often directed uh, teacher provides a guidance uh, gives a, a motivation and support the students students converse with another as well so it is not just that the teacher speaks students also speak and they also uh, converse among themselves now the next question that uh, comes over here is that how language is viewed and how culture is viewed so language is primarily spoken okay and uh, spoken is is emphasized it is not the written communication which is given importance in this in this method therefore students learn use everyday topics everyday conversational dialogues in the target language and they also study culture or the history of the people who speak the target language so whatever happens is happening through the target language and what areas of language are emphasized vocabulary is emphasized uh, over grammar vocabulary is emphasized over grammar and although uh, work uh, takes place on all the four skills listening speaking reading and writing but uh, the but we saw and realized that uh, spoken communication is mainly taken into consideration besides we saw that listening also takes place because in a conversation it is not just the spoken part that comes up listening also goes hand in hand so listening and spoken are mainly emphasized reading and written are not that frequent but yeah grammar is being considered however grammar is taught inductively uh, vocabulary is given more importance now the next question here is what is the role of the students native language so there is no role as such prescribed in the direct method with regard to the uh, there is no role of the native language in using direct method and the entire dependency uh, is on the target language so in a way we can say that this method is independent and how does the teacher respond to student errors that is one of the essential questions that come over here that how stu that how teacher responds to the students so the teacher employing various techniques tries to get the students to self correct now here again the term has come self correction or self correct here teacher doesn't interfere when students make mistakes rather teacher facilitates uh, the 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 the, uh, uh, the appropriate way of saying it so for instance we take up the example of trivandrum where students was finding difficulty in pronouncing uh, the particular name of the city so in that way teacher works with the student okay uh, and here teacher is an aid teacher supports or teacher uh, student relationship develops and a rapport is being evolved and in this way students come up from their problems and there are many times when they are not 
you know when they are not targeted on their errors rather they are given a chance to make errors and then realize what is not accurate and when they use it again in their real life context they eventually self correct themselves so self correction is a major technique in direct method however in the grammar translation method self correction is not being given the platform so after having a thorough understanding of grammar translation method and direct method let us try to conclude of what we learned so far in the grammar translation method we learned that students use a uh, native language for communication but it mainly teaches the target language uh, but it doesn't tell how to use it so as you see in the slide a uh, grammar translation method focuses on reading the literature in the target language it is not using a conversational approach and it is more on literary piece or a kind of text that can be used in a language classroom now when it comes to culture like when we talk about language we often say that language and culture are inseparable entities and they are very much interconnected but in grammar translation method we are not viewing culture as a separate entity but we introduce culture through literature so when a student go through the literature they also get to know about the cultural component of it they get to know about for example that we just uh, mentioned in the example that we have gone through um, the rk narayan's uh, story in which uh, the rise of the mahatma is being discussed we understood that culture is mainly emphasized through the piece of the literature so the total scenario of the pre independence period is being uh, portrayed over there there uh, struggles uh, were also portrayed and uh, the uh, non cooperation movement satyagraha movement and a and others were also emphasized so by reading literature students get to know what were the uh, what what was the society at that time how students or how people used to survive how the revolutions were taking place what were the movements that were taking place for the independence and how india got independence and what were the uh, main uh, 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 main movements that are responsible for it and we also got to know a lot about our freedom fighters so uh, not just the text that we read we also read the history we also understood the indian culture we also understood that how uh, how how india is formed and through that we can form our prospects also and we can develop our critical thinking it believes in teaching grammar deductively since we studied that inductive teaching and deductive teaching are two different inductive teaching mainly refers to the presentation of example followed by the theorem or the rule however deductive proposes the idea of putting up the rule first and then it is followed by example in the second uh, part of this lecture we focused mainly on direct method and we understood that how direct method brought reforms in the language teaching and learning pedagogy so it was not merely based on translation and it was also not merely based on uh, on considering teaching teacher as a central or a main part of the classroom but it gives more expansion to students as well as to the teacher it gave more scope of learning uh, spoken and listening skills so the target is to make the students communicate in language since the conversation takes place dialogue occurs uh, students ask the questions teacher responds to it uh, the object is being used and uh, and a rapport between the student and the teacher is formed 
so we see that communication is largely emphasized in the direct method then we see that culture is taught as people's daily lives in addition to literature and fine arts so culture is uh, mainly responsible and um, it is not being isolated and uh, it is not merely a part of literature only it is something which is included in our daily lives so if we incorporate examples from our real life situations or real life scenarios we'll be able to trace out many examples of culture practices so in the direct method we not only focused on the part of the literature but through the conversation through the dialogues or through the object presentation we can make out or figure out a lot of things that are being happening today and we can learn the language through our daily or through our uh, frequent conversational practices in the slide as you see that dictation can be used uh, as a worthwhile activity for practicing direct method in addition we see that grammar is used inductively now there is again a contrast here why i'm talking uh, inductive and deductive approach because these approaches have uh, have given two distinct ways to language learning and teaching pedagogies and grammar is taught so grammar is taught inductively and why i'm saying that inductive and deductive approaches are too important in the deductive approach it is becoming old and it is not very encouraged because students are confined to that rule and uh, they may not develop a large understanding as compared to the inductive method so one of the key differences that we see in the grammar translation and the direct method is that uh, grammar is taught deductively in grammar translation however in direct method grammar is taught inductively dear learners since you have gone through both the uh, methods and you have learned the techniques of it as well now let us try to reflect of what is uh, appropriate with regard to modern day scenario and that's why i'm putting up some questions here try to analyze these questions and gather the answers of it so the first question that that is over here is that do you agree that the goal of the target language do you agree that the target language instruction should be used as a medium of instruction so target language should be used as medium of instruction or not you can agree or disagree also if you agree you can support your answer by explaining that target language uh, can support uh, a com uh, spoken communication it can also facilitate listening skills besides if you do not agree you can largely emphasize on the importance of translation method so it is up to you which side would you like to take it the second thing is uh, what do you think should be the role of the teacher in the classroom do you think that teacher should play a central role or do you agree of the point that student should take a front role and student should be the central uh, central tenet of any classroom and what about the chance the participation of the students in the classroom should they be given an equal opportunity to participate in the real life situations or should they be guided with only literary text or pieces so i'm writing over here what should be the role of students and teachers now my next question is which technique do you which techniques do you like most in grammar translation method and which technique do you like most in uh, direct method 
So, you can gather at least two to three techniques that you like most in any of the uh, grammar translation and if you do not like any of the techniques, then you can tell why do you think so. So, I am sure there would have been some uh, points that you would like to make and you would have experienced some techniques in your real life situations also. You might have been using it in your classroom and you can eventually make out which kind of technique is really successful and how does it work with students uh, opt outcome. So, which technique would you uh, prefer most? You can state either one method, you can stay it for some points from grammar translation method and direct method and uh, you can put up your point in any way you, you think is better. So, here are the references and with this we have come to an end of this session. Thank you very much for joining. We will take up uh, two other approaches of language teaching and learning in the next class. Thank you. Understanding oneself, understanding others, understanding society at large, understanding the nature, these are all driven by basic human curiosity. We would all love to understand why things happen, what happens, what is the final outcome, why certain things fail. These are all exercises that we perform in various domains of knowledge. Therefore, knowledge in various domains you would realize they are actually social artifacts. They have to be rooted into historical perspective, they have to be culturally salient and there would be socio-political reasons behind this. Whether you talk with respect to engineering sciences, whether you talk with respect to physical sciences, biological sciences, social sciences, that is the reason why humanities and social sciences should be understood by all of us. The knowledge that is segregated, that is divided with respect to areas, specializations, all of them needs to be understood in its context. And what provides the context? It is the social reality. How do you correlate knowledge in a given domain with the cultural reality, with the social reality? with the socio-political compulsions. Okay. How do you understand the law of nature okay, in its totality and for doing that you require the understanding of humanities and social sciences. Say for instance, if you are trying to understand the effect of a particular bacteria, a virus, any microbe, how it affects behavior, how it affects the organism, human being. You start looking at it from a pure biological point of view. If you are trying to look at a particular type of a wavelength, say for example, you are emphasizing on the understanding of the effect of radiation on human life. You are looking at things from a physical point of view. You are looking at the corresponding changes inside the body. You are looking at the physiological side of the uh, understanding of the information. You are trying to understand why despite knowing the risk that is inbuilt in the process, why still human beings engage into it. You are looking at it from a pure behavioral point of view. Why society at large admire things which has full of risk. You are trying to understand things from a pure sociological point of view. Why people use particular uh, set of words to explain those experiences. You are trying to understand things from the linguistic point of view. So, there are whole lot of things and then finally, you try to combine all of them to say that what are the guiding principles in life 
then you say you are looking at life, you are looking at humanity from a pure philosophical point of view. And this is what social sciences courses provide you. They provide the context to you in which you would be finally positioning the understanding of the knowledge in any given domain. It could be engineering, it could be sciences, it could be medical sciences, it could be social sciences stuff, it could be humanities stuff. So, con contextualizing the knowledge is what humanities social science courses help you obtain.